Hello guys, how are we all doing? Welcome back to yet another video. Goodness me, I didn't think that would have been the scoreline today. Fulham 1, Coventry City 3. And we were brilliant today, boys. Yeah, I don't think we really expected that, especially with only having half a team. You know, the, we've, we've dropped so many points in recent weeks and it's clear to see why we've been out. We've been without McFadden, we've been without uh, Matty Godden and, you know, a couple of the players. Yeah, well. also. Yeah, a few of the players as well. You know, our squad is just so, so small that it's, uh, you know, the season has kind of uh, you know, gone the wrong way towards the end of things. But yeah, brilliant result today. Can't complain. Yeah, I think the squad depth has caught up with us a little bit in recent weeks, but we've completely seemed to forget about all that today. And I don't really know why. I don't really know what happened, but it's not like this is a freak result because we played well enough to win this game by this mm. score. We played well enough for this in the first half because we, the amount of chances we did create in the first half, mm. it was unreal. The, the only difference between this game and, I don't know, say, Derby away was that we actually finished those chances off yeah. uh, today. And it's just been such a, a nice viewing to watch us score those chances and score chances that weren't really um, available as chances in a way. Because that, that second goal... Because mm. that second goal from Jokerez, there's no way the keeper should be letting that in from there. No. Uh, but... The fact that he's gone for it and the fact that he's hit it well enough to get, even get it on target, at that point it can go anywhere. And so it proves. So a bit hairy towards the end after they scored. Yes, <laughs> um, absolutely. Definitely on the edge of our seat. But it was, it was definitely definitely entertainment for the afternoon, for sure. Oh, honestly. Yeah. Let's run you through the order of how things happened. To be honest, for the first 20 minutes, undeniably, Coventry were the better team. We scored through Michael Rose, uh, Michael Rose's header from a Gustavo Haver corner, and it was just a brilliant corner. His set pieces today were really good. And it was only four minutes later we doubled our lead. And that goal was a bit questionable from the goalkeeper, Victor Jokres, hit and hope from outside the box and did bobble just in front of the keeper. Puts 2-0 up going into half-time. Got to credit the defence as well to, you know, keep it at 2-0 for so long. They did pull one back, which is inevitable with Fulham. They're a top, top team. They did pull one back on 82 minutes. Bobby deckled over Reed scoring. And from there, it did feel like Fulham were going to just dominate until the end. And they kind of did, but Coventry City ground it out. And in fact, they put some icing on the cake with Callum O'Hare's goal, forcing Fulham into a mistake, which we did when we played them at home this season. I think Coventry were very good. Fulham were good going forwards, but we exploited their defence today. Yeah, I think uh, that's the way to really play against the top side. So you've got to get in the face. You haven't got to give them respect. I feel that that's why Fulham have completely steamrolled some teams this season. You know, they've won 6 7 nil, haven't they, numerous of times this season. And I feel like you can't just sit off and, you know, try and hope for a nil-nil draw or whatever. You need to get at them. Get in the face. Don't give them time on the ball, and you know you'll be rewarded for that. No, you're, you're right. There's a lot of teams that go to Fulham and just expect to be able to grind out a result to the end, and maybe nick it with a dodgy counter attack. But mm. I think I, was, I said a couple of things during the uh, during the stream itself, during the game itself. Uh, one of which it was like a free hit smack, very much a Brentford at home last season, where we were expected to get battered, and then we went and put in a brilliant performance and won the game. And the other thing I said was a lot of teams when they come here and uh, and we beat them it seems to be because well, when they come to Coventry and we beat them a lot of those teams come to play football and we struggle against the teams that try and sit back and play a bit more negatively the poor Fulham won yeah. yeah Fulham <laughs> wanted to play football yeah. um, we didn't let them because we played better football I think mm -hmm. is the easiest way to put it and so that <clears> those two things really just that no pressure and go out and express yourself mentality has allowed this result Absolutely. Looking at the stats there, it does suggest, like I say, Fulham had a lot going for them. But I think, you know, you've got to credit Simon Moore and the Coventry defenders. 65% mm. uh, possession, 28 shots to 18. Um, look at that. Big chances. Fulham had four, Coventry had three. So Coventry, for once, were actually ruthless and Fulham were not. Uh, Fulham hit the woodwork a couple of times there. So the stats do suggest Fulham could have got something from it. But you know what? The amount of times Coventry have been the better team and not been able to uh, get a result over the line. Um, let's have a look at the table then. Coventry City up to 10th now. What are we looking at? Look, five games to go. We're six points off the playoffs. Is that something we can look at or no? Well, I, I said start the season, top 10 would be a good season. Yeah. I think now, where we're at, I think anything less than top 10 would be a disappointing season. Just because how <laughs> good a start we had. Um, realistically, playoffs is not on. We need to win five out of five now. You can't see that happening. We have, we've only won two in a row all season, so... 
I can't see us winning the remainder of our games, especially when we've still got the likes of Bournemouth. You, you, know, but you, don't, you don't look at it like that. I mean, obviously, you probably do need to win maximum points or whatever, but you take each game as it comes. After Birmingham, if we've won that, then are you still ruling it out? We'll see. We'll see when that happens. So you've yeah. got to take each game as it comes. But let's run through those Coventry fixtures, and I'll come to you, Harry, because we've got Birmingham City uh, away, uh, Bournemouth at home, West Brom away, Huddersfield at home, and Stoke away. Now, Birmingham away, just got a feeling it'll be a draw again. What do you think? Well, I mean, for me, you've got to forget that. You've got to forget the hoodoo around it in previous results. I fancy 1-0, I do well, I do. One well, I, well, not maybe one nil, but I, 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 I fancy us to win that game. You, you look at all of those games, and the way that we've just played against the best team in the league you've seen for a long time, there's no reason we can't win all of them. And you don't think of it like that. You think of it, as you say, one game at a time. Um, but it's the fact that we've got Birmingham, who are you know bottom half, bottom six, uh, winnable game on paper. No reason we can't go and do that. West Brom are inconsistent as any team in this division. And they can probably be exploited to some degree. And then we've got to play Bournemouth and uh, Huddersfield, who are already in the top six, so we can nick some points there. And then Stoke is a team that we could easily beat as well if we're on our form. Because when we played them at home, they didn't really threaten us. I know it was only a 1-0 that game, I think, wasn't it? But it was a game where we should have won by more, as a lot of our wins have been this season. So there's no reason we can't do it. Mm. It's just, can we, with the way the squad is right now? Absolutely, yeah. I look at those games, and realistically, Birmingham don't have anything to play for. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Uh, Bournemouth have got a lot to play for, but we're at home. I do fancy us more when we're at home. Like Harry said, with West Brom, they're very inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get. And then come that Huddersfield game, the way I'm looking at it is, they're obviously in the top six now. If we could get within six points of them, with the final two games and beat them we could go into the final day still with a chance that's probably the best we can hope yeah I mean realistically Huddersfield at this point is the only team that you can see dropping out of the top six mm. oh really so we do have to we do have to sort of keep within reaching distance yeah, well, the, of them who else in the top six can you see dropping out realistically Sheffield United won't because they've got the squad depth enough and they play well Forest actually looking further towards Bournemouth than they are to seven. I think I think the top three aren't aren't really. I mean, obviously Fulham and Bournemouth, you know, but I, I think Forest we know are definitely in there as well now. Yeah, and the the, the only team that there is potentially a question mark over is Luton, but I don't expect Luton to drop out. No. I think they're good enough, especially if they can get a result tomorrow night against yeah, Huddersfield. Exactly. We'll keep an eye on Huddersfield versus Luton tomorrow. But just going back to Coventry today, because I don't think many of us realistically think the playoffs are on as an isolated result. Today was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's exactly. something that you said. Is it was a statement result. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just fantastic, guys. Honestly, the positivity that's coming back to Coventry with these these kind of results is just fantastic. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. It has finished Fulham 1, Coventry City 3. Thank you for your great support. Make sure you've dropped a like and subscribed. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Peace out.